The Cradle of Forestry celebrates a century of conservation and the vision of the first pioneers of forestry. George Vanderbilt had a dream. It began in 1889 when he selected a site for a large estate he named Biltmore and then decided to purchase and restore thousands of acres of damaged woodlands that surrounded his property. To help him pursue his plans, he hired a German forester, Carl Schenk. With a degree in forestry, Schenk had the knowledge and enthusiasm needed to begin the difficult process of rejuvenating the forests and soils. In 1898, Carl Schenk established a school, the first school of forestry in the nation. At the site of this school, now called the Cradle of Forestry in America, Schenk began to explore new forestry methods and conduct experiments with his students. The campus at Biltmore Forest School consisted of mountaineer cabins and farm homes, which once had been part of the community that sprung up in this area. Serving as both a church and school, this one-room community building became a classroom where in the morning, Schenk lectured. And in the afternoon, he led students to the field to test out applications of his theories. Since he was German, Schenk needed to learn more about American trees, so he experimented with different species in the school's tree nursery. He taught students about good forest management practices. Students worked two small sawmills to learn proper lumbering techniques and studied locomotive logging operations that worked to bring huge logs and supplies around the switchbacks of the hills. Down the trail from the schoolhouse is an opening in the forest where you see a commissary built by Vanderbilt for his workers and those still living in the Pink Beds area. The forestry students bought supplies here and ate a quick lunch before going into their outdoor laboratory. Each student needed a horse so they could accompany Schenk on his lectures in the field. An engraved plaque sums up student sentiment. Who is the man on a horse named Punch, riding along at the head of the bunch, giving no time to eat our lunch? Schenk made sure there was a blacksmithing shop so shoes on horses could be replaced and wagons and logging equipment could be repaired. Students lived in cabins left by earlier settlers or with Schenck's locally hired rangers. Ranger cabins were located where they could watch for game violators and unauthorized timber cutting. Schenck kept detailed records about the timber business, so he set up an office for himself in a small structure built from an abandoned barn. This is his desk where he prepared his lecture outlines and texts because there were no books on forestry by American authors at that time. Through his teaching efforts and practical applications, he hoped to conserve the forest for the future. 80,000 acres of Vanderbilt's estate eventually became part of the Pisgah National Forest. Later, Congress set aside 6,500 acres as the cradle of forestry in America to commemorate the beginning of forest conservation and education in the United States. The Cradle of Forestry lies in a high elevation valley called the Pink Beds, which may get its name from the pink color that the mountain laurel and mountain flocks display in the spring and summer. As you follow its trails, a mix of different hardwoods and evergreens shade the floor of the woodland. Below the overstory grow mats of moss and lacy ferns. A unique feature of this area is the network of wetland bogs, which contain soils and plants that are very different from the communities surrounding them. Bogs are usually found on fairly flat terrain, where for various reasons, water enters the system faster than it leaves. Saturated with water for most of the year, many bogs have thick layers of spongy sphagnum moss underlain by deep layers of peat and black mud. Bogs, like other wetlands, are important because they act as natural water purification systems, filtering out silt and absorbing many pollutants. Look closely and you can see many examples of rare species, such as the swamp pink, golden club, and dewdrop, also known as robin runaway. This rare plant, with its leaves that resemble a small violet and its star-shaped white bloom, only grows in three North Carolina counties. 
Bogs also provide food and shelter for many animal and bird species. Living in the mud, grass, and sphagnum moss are rare bog turtles, North Carolina's smallest turtle. These wonderful places for plants and animals can be easily destroyed if water flow patterns are disturbed, for water is the lifeblood of a bog ecosystem.